Chris Hamrick from Arch Reynolds Tobacco Company. And uh, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit different context of kind of what Dale was talking about. It's kind of our journey that we've taken for the last 10 or so years and kind of where we see going in the future with this convergence of IT and, and OT. So who is RJ Reynolds? Just really quick. Um, we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Reynolds American, which was in 2017 acquired by British American Tobacco Company. So we're now part of the largest publicly traded tobacco company in the world. Um, very proud of being a member of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index in 2016, which was the last year we were independent and had the ability to do that. So where did we start? Um, the challenge that we were facing was, was really a shrinking market in the United States. Uh, as everybody sees the news, uh, admittedly an unpopular industry, a lot of regulatory scrutiny that keeps becoming greater and greater, and not a lot of benchmarks of what do you do if you're kind of in this situation. So one of the things that I will say is we've gone down this journey of trying to converge these two technology platforms is you've got to have support from the top. And we were lucky in that we had a senior vice president of operations that really embraced that and was our champion and helped us as we ran into roadblocks as we continued kind of down this path. And so that's really kind of the, the point of this slide is that you've got to have buy-in from the people on the plant floor all the way up to the top that are controlling the purse strings. And if you don't have that, you're going to have a really, really rocky ride. So what were our objectives when we started? We were told we're going to focus on what's core. We're going to leverage our supply chain. And kind of the key here is approach problems, challenges, and opportunities with strategy and technology. As a company, we have historically been early adopters of technology and have very much embraced that whole work smarter, not harder mentality of allowing technology to help us drive our business. And so we were to do that, and in a collaborative approach, um, Dale kind of mentioned his presentation, and I've heard others, is everybody has to have a seat at the table. The IT folks have a seat at the table, the OT, or in our case, kind of our controls engineering group really serves most of that OT space. The manufacturing folks, maintenance folks, everybody has to have a seat at the table and has to have some ownership if you're going to be successful. So this eye chart's not really meant to, to tell you anything specifically other than we started really in 2007, um, before this timeline shows up here, with some planning. And at that time, we had literally hundreds of disparate systems that were homegrown, home-built for some specific task. We had inventory within the plant that existed in at least four different systems. So you could see parts of inventory in some systems and not in others. Um, just data, we had big data before big data was really a word, but it was just scattered, um, kind of, as Dale said, I hadn't really thought of the pirate's treasure, but it was scattered everywhere. And uh, nobody really had the keys to the whole kingdom. So as we started, we were trying to replace those legacy systems that we no longer had a support base for, we no longer had hardware and operating systems support base for those, and get them into a consolidated system where we had a real view of all the information that we had from the plant. So we started down this journey. Um, we had SAP installed as an ERP. Uh, I think anybody that's done that then realizes you have to feed data to this beast or 
it, it can't function. Um, so we undertook a, a project or series of projects to implement an MES system, basically to, to serve that function and consolidate these legacy systems, which at the time then we realized necessitated an update to controls to feed the MES beast. Um, and so as you start through here, as you can see, it's not a project, it is a lot of projects that are going on in parallel and planning and in series. And as we moved on kind of into the next phase of it, we really looked at that point to try to monetize what we were building, what we had put in. So at this point, we're taking the consolidated functions that we had created because um, you, you can't really go into this as a technology project per se. As we went into this and consolidated all these legacy systems, we consolidated business processes in order to be able to consolidate those legacy systems. And we consolidated all those different functions into a core set of functions that then get rolled out to all the different operating areas of the plant. And then subsequently, as time moved on, we acquired some other uh, tobacco companies. And so we began to roll this template out to these other companies and consolidate everybody's data and really start to reap the benefits of what we had, had built. Okay. So big wins. We, we had some cost savings immediately and things that were recover, recurring, and we're still reaping the benefits of those. But you do need to try to find something um, as you're gaining support for these projects where you can get a quick win. You can actually show that, hey, we, we really do know what we're talking about. We really can provide information, and we can save some money. And once that happens, your credibility goes up tremendously and it really helps you as you're, you're trying to move forward with your project and gain funding for those things. Um, big thing I think we did was really establish a platform for growth. A um, lot of things move really quick in all industries today and the tobacco industry has been no different. As, you know, 10 years ago, um, nobody really knew what an e-cigarette was or a vaping device, and now there are shops and technology prevalent everywhere. So you have to be ready for what, what will come in the future in the business because you don't know. You don't know what may happen 10 years from now. And then we instituted some best practices and certifications. So our IT department... Um, is very embedded in the ITIL philosophy. Uh, we use some MESA models, ISA standards, and incorporating all of those has kind of kept us all on the same page and more in line so that, you know, it's resulted in very consistent deliveries as we roll out into a new plant, a new area of a plant with these functions is it works. It works well. The people understand what's coming, they're ready for it, and they're embracing it. So what's next? Um, the question, the first question I think was really uh, relevant here is a, a digitally connected enterprise. Uh, where are we? I would say we're in progress. I'm not sure that I would ever say that we had arrived and that we were digitally connected. Um, so what, what does that mean? We're really blurring the lines between the IT and the OT. Um, and, and when I say that, uh, not really kind of in the conventional manner, but we actually have collaborative efforts going on now in which we have really taken a different approach and as we, we went through this transformation from the old legacy systems that I talked about earlier, 
you know, the, the IT folks and the engineering folks were all at the table. We had a joint team that implemented the MES system that we put in. They had folks from engineering, folks from IT, folks from manufacturing, all together on that team. But we still had the controls engineers that were really kind of looking at what's the control system need to be. And they were off designing their control system and we were doing the MES and we came together and looked for a way to connect the two and, and really start to, to integrate. The approach we've taken now is we're looking at the manufacturing system landscape as a whole, as a whole being. It's not controls and MES and other IT applications, but it's its own entity that services and makes manufacturing click. So we have teams together from our IT folks and engineering folks that as we're sitting down and we're planning out what are we going to do in the next three years, the next six years, the next ten years, is we're doing that jointly and looking at it as one entity. And really that's breaking down, I think, the remaining barriers that existed there between what IT would like to do and, and what the engineering folks would like to do. So if you look at that, why? Why aren't we doing it? You know, as I'd said, you know, the targets never stops moving. Um, marketplace changes. And quite frankly, you either move quick, you grab your part of the market, or you've missed it. You've missed the opportunity and, and that potential income is gone. So one of the platforms that we have, have chosen that we're moving forward with is Ignition from Inductive Automation. And um, kind of what we find that it brings to the table is it really bridges that gap between IT and OT. As we look through, you know, how Ignition's platformed, how it operates, um, everything that's under the hood that goes with it. There are things that are really familiar to our true IT friends. And there are also things that our OT folks understand can be leveraged to really move us into a step change. So in doing that, it has really helped to, to bring the two groups together. Uh, just from an architecture perspective, uh, again, you've, you've got some you know, OS independence, so we're running on Windows, we're running on Linux. Um, compliance, again, with security and technology standards that our IT folks understand. So as they sit down and start to look at these products and question, what are you doing, how are you using it, um, they're much more comfortable than they are with some of the traditional products that we've used. Uh, scalability. We have really small standalone installations, and then, as you'll see on a, a slide to come, really an enterprise wide connected implementation. And then, legacy. You know, one of the things that, that we've found refreshing with Ignition is many of the systems that we were using historically, you know, were developed years ago on the technology that existed at the time and they've adapted and changed and worked, but there's still usually somewhere some sort of a legacy baggage that kind of hangs on and, you know, Ignition doesn't really have that legacy baggage. So it's, it's made it much easier to work with and really in the ITOT convergence space, dealing with our legacy equipment. We have a plant, uh, it's in the 30 year old range now, um, so we have a span of technology that really ranges that entire 30 years. So we have machines that are discrete control. We have machines that are coming in with their own networks and motion control, and we have everything in between. So being able to connect and gather the data from all those different vintages of equipment's really you know, set us apart in being able to move. And again, culture enablement, and I'll talk to that just a little bit more in the future. So, kind of where have we gone? Um, 
we really started, uh, we found the product, looked at it and said, hey, this looks pretty neat. So what can we do with it? So we were kind of playing with it, testing, trying to decide, did it have a, a life somewhere in our landscape? And we started with one machine and one license. And we had a brand new world machine that had come into our plant. We were trying to get it started up. Um, we had problems literally all over the machine, as you can imagine, as it was new to world. And we had people working on every part of the machine, so we were making no progress whatsoever. And so management came to me and they said, we need data from the machine so that we can determine where are the real bottlenecks, what do we need to work on? And I said, well, that's fine. We can you know, work on putting together a project. We can connect it up to the systems that we have and our data historian. And they stopped me in mid-sentence and said, you have seven days. And I said, well, then that's out the window. Do I have any money? And they said, you tell me how much. So basically at that point, we uh, installed an ignition license on a tower PC sitting under the desk of one of my controls engineers and connected it to the machine. Began historizing data and built some rudimentary uh, retrieval screens. And four days later, we had data. And at that point then, within the first three weeks, we had increased the output of the machine by 50%. So it's just kind of grown from there uh, till now we have it in over 10 plants, um, north of a million tags. I and mean, you can kind of read the, the size of the distributed system. So similar to the way you saw the other transformation start, this one has started from a single point and morphed into multiple parallel projects as we've pushed out and uh, continue. What's coming next, that's what we're planning for today. Um, as we look at kind of where, where we are and where we've been, uh, one of the things we're really trying to do as the IT and engineering folks are more and more engaged with each other is find sets of tools that are common that we can use in both spaces so we can, one, have a broader support base, two, have some uh, commonality and support and lower that cost to ownership. And so. That's kind of what we found here is that we're using this for SCADA, we're using it to historize data, and the IT folks are actually starting to use it for projects that are theirs that the engineering folks have no involvement in. So that's kind of basically our story of IT and OT convergence.